Attorney General Bill Barr speaking out in his first round of interviews since taking over as Attorney General. And he says this morning that he was surprised that Bob Mueller did not make a recommendation one way or the other on obstruction of justice. Now, remember what Mueller wrote in, in his report about obstruction. He wrote this. If we had confidence after a thorough investigation of the facts that the president clearly did not commit obstruction of justice, we would so state. Based on the facts and the applicable legal standards, however, we are unable to reach that judgment. While this report does not conclude that the president committed a crime, it also does not exonerate him. So Barr also calling accusations by Democrats, including House Speaker Nancy Pelosi, that, she, that he lied under oath. He's calling that this morning laughable. But his big focus is on exactly what the president is so focused on, the start of the Russia investigation and whether there was anything inappropriate about the launch of it. Here's what he had to say about that. People have to find out what the government was doing during that period. If we're, if we're worried about foreign influence, for the very same reason, we should be worried about whether government officials abuse their power and put their thumb on the scale. And, and so I'm not saying that happened, uh, but I'm saying that we have to look at that. Let's go over to the Justice Department right now. Laura Jarrett is there. So, Laura, what else did the attorney general say this morning? Well, Kate, Barr is saying that he's not prejudging this review that he's undertaking on the genesis of the Russia investigation, but he's also saying it wasn't business as usual and a small ad hoc group, he's calling it, of officials who are no longer at the FBI and CIA uh, were undertaking actions that he's trying to get to the bottom of. And he's saying that he's asking questions and he's simply not getting adequate answers. He's also revealing for the first time in a Fox interview today that he's having uh, the January 6th 2017 meeting where President Trump was actually briefed on that infamous dossier having to do with Trump and Russia and all of those connections. We've heard so much about the one that was compiled by that ex-British intelligence officer, Christopher Seal. He's saying that the leaks coming out of that meeting is something that he's actually looking into as part of this probe. And then he goes on to talk about how that the dossier was used, rehearsing some talking points that we've actually heard from the president and his allies. Take a listen to what he said on this point. Can you tell us what the Steele dossier had to do with this? What role did that play? Well, that's one of the questions, uh, you know, that we're going to have to look at. It, it's a very unusual situation to have opposition research like that, especially one that on its face uh, had a number of clear mistakes and a, and a somewhat jejun analysis and to and to use that to, to conduct uh, counterintelligence against the American political campaign is a strange, uh, would be a strange development. Do you smell a rat in this at this point? I don't know if I'd describe it a rat. I, I would just say that uh, the, you know, the answers I'm getting uh, are not sufficient. Now, how the dossier was used, of course, is something that has been a subject of wide debate for the past several years. But it's also something that the inspector general is already looking into over here at the Justice Department. The main watchdog office is looking into whether uh, enough was used and disclosed in the surveillance warrants that were used by the FBI to obtain that surveillance warrant on that former campaign aide Carter Page. But Barr still raising some more questions on that, even though the attorney, uh, inspector general is looking into it, Kate. Great to see you, Laura. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Sure. Joining me right now for much more on this, former U.S. attorney Greg Brower. He's also a former FBI official and CNN White House correspondent Caitlin Collins. So, Caitlin, you've got Barr on just kind of setting the stage where things stand right now in this. You've got Barr saying that he's looking into it. Mm -hmm. But you also have Donald Trump this morning already going toward already going to treason and saying that treason did happen this coming out in a tweet and also at the same time as we know the president says that he's not telling Barr to do anything yeah now Barr is saying he has more questions than he has answers right now and he's raising a lot of questions about how this probe was started he is casting a ton of doubt on the mm -hmm. senior people who started this questioning as Laura was saying there the group who started it but then you see the president seems to have already prejudged the outcome of what Bill Barr is looking into he and his defenders have said for months even years now that the people who started this probe were biased against the president. They didn't want him to win the election. Once he did win the election, they didn't want him to be in office. So it's interesting to see how the president is framing what Bill Barr is saying and how what Bill Barr is saying. But Bill Barr is making some pretty stunning comments there, not only talking about uh, how the investigation started, but talking about the way the special counsel, a personal friend of Bill Barr's, mm -hmm. conducted himself, too, in a pretty stunning interview. Yeah, I, I, thought, I thought so as well. I mean, I, I'm left after watching Bill Barr speak out this morning and how 
Laura said, he's that he says that he's not prejudging the outcome of any of these investigations. But where, what do you think? I know you thought of this. If Barr, after this review, concludes that everything was on the up and up, and the IG kind of reaches the same the same conclusion, there are no charges, no firings, none of it. What does the president do then? Because the president has reached this conclusion. Yeah, and people close to the president don't think that if Bill Barr comes out on the other side of this and says, actually, there was no bias, there was none of that, even though it's clearly not the way Bill Barr is leaning by the way he's been looking into this, they don't think the president would readily accept that, yes, there was no one biased against him because he is convinced and set in that that these people were biased against him, and that's how this investigation was conducted. So that's the question there of how this goes forward. But right now, Bill Barr seems to be more siding and agreeing with the president's mm -hmm. view of all of this than with other people. That's where this is going to get interesting. How does the, he square this with the FBI director, Chris Wray, who said he would not have used the term spying. That is something that infuriated the president, and he did not like seeing uh, Chris Wray make that answer. Yeah, and he's made that very clear. Let's see where that relationship goes. Um, let me bring Greg in on this. So, Greg, you also you, you got Bill Barr saying that it isn't... It, well, sorry. You've got Bill Barr saying, if it's important to look into Russian interference, it's just as important to look into why the investigation was started in the first place. Do you see that? Well, in the absence of any evidence that the investigation was started for any improper purpose, it, it would seem curious that the AG would be focused on this. There is an IG, an inspector general investigation ongoing. It seems to me, and I think to most others in Washington, that the AG should just let the IG finish his work. Uh, but of course, in the abstract, it's important for the attorney general as the head of the Department of Justice to know if there was any misconduct. But in the absence of any evidence of misconduct, it would seem to me to be uh, improper for the AG to initiate a review based on what appears to be nothing more than presidential tweets. The AG has said that he is, he is not satisfied with certain answers he has received about the right. beginning of the investigation. But, but, but by whom? Who, who is giving him those answers? We haven't heard from any other DOJ officials that the investigation was be begun for any improper purpose. And that's an interesting, it's a really interesting point because he was not giving on that at all in this interview that he, that he did with Fox News. He also spoke with the Wall Street Journal, Greg, and he said in, that he, and he, and he said that um, his investigation into the origins of the Russia probe, it could lead, and the, the way he put it was, the Wall Street Journal put it, is it could lead into changes in the rules of how investigations are conducted or allowed to be conducted into a campaign going forward. Sure. What could that mean to you? I mean, what are the rules? What could the changes be? Well, there are attorney general guidelines that govern a broad range of different types of investigations, DOJ investigations, including investigations of, of uh, political candidates and campaigns. Uh, but, but again, in the absence of actual evidence that anything improper happened here, it would seem curious to talk about an investigation uh, in a way that tracks what the president has been saying. That has caused many people in Washington and around the country, frankly, mm -hmm. to think that the attorney general is simply playing politics with this. I would like to think that he is not playing politics with it, but to the extent that his comments track the president's, that's the appearance. Yeah. And the response that White House people and the president's allies would have to that is that Bill Barr is not someone who knew the president before he became attorney general. And he has this long, uh, great reputation, people say, and that he has earned that. And they say he would not throw himself in front of a train for President Trump. So they say that is something that they want people to keep in mind as he's conducting this investigation. 